Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. A happy Sunday to you all, or if you're watching this on any other day of the week. Hopefully, you are having a great day, regardless. I'm very, I was a very productive boy today. Got a whole lot of stuff done. Went and got planters so I can grow some herbs, and vegetables in the front porch or the front veranda. I did my bedding and laundry. I cleaned up around the house. And I'm feeling super productive, so let's crank through some more music that I missed while I was away. Uh, and get through some of the big stuff that I missed while I was away, in particular. Um, this, I believe, dropped pretty much right when I was doing my entrance interview for my PhD program. So I have absolutely no real connection with checking this out, apart from the pre-release. Because we checked out the pre-release when that dropped. That was... Sonyar. I'm pretty sure we made a video on Sonyar when it dropped as the pre-release back when I was still living in America. But MX's FE304 break album. MX have had a really good track record when it comes to their albums recently. Um even going back to you know Young Dumb Stupid and with the Expergo album and like, retroactively, I've gone back and gone through, like, Tank and Cool Rainbow and stuff like that. And it's it's honestly been a really good time. And Enmix's music, for me, have has always been quite a good time. Even if it is a little bit out of my comfort zone, I've always learned something from it. And I've taken it in with a very positive reception. So, we're going to run through the entirety of the FE304 Break album starting with well we'll go in order of the track list i have all of them pulled up on the side we'll treat this exactly like we'll do an album listen you know read through the credits go in song order we'll run through sonyar again just so i can refresh myself because it's been a long time since i've listened to it and i am familiar with one song on the album uh track number three run for roses uh especially after finding out that young k was involved with it and it's also one of my go-to songs of Superstar GYP uh, for NMX, that and Home from the Expergo album. So I am familiar with those songs, well, specifically with Run For Roses, and then of course we checked out Sonyar four months ago. But we have, what is it? It's a seven-song album, so we've got five essentially new songs to check out. So, enough waffling from me. Let's get started. I'm very excited for this because this is a release that I even mentioned when I made the video after my uh, entrance interview that I was really excited to get into, but I never did end up getting into it just because February ended up February and March ended up being the busiest months I've had in the past like four years. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, but we're gonna start track at number one, the title track of the album Dash. I know the hook. But that's about it. Dash, I want the dash, I want the one the word that that's that's about all I know. But alright, here we go. Track number one, dash, lyrics by this is a long credits list. Okay, um there's a one J of Jam Factory, Jung Dion of On Klasa, Beck Same of PNP, Oh Hyun Son of La 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 Studio, Rick Bridges, Kim In of 153 Jumbas, Hyung Gun of In House. Uh, Weekly and then Song Eugene of Jam Factory. That's all on lyrics. My goodness. Uh, composition Puff, Strong Dragon from the Hub, and Sisa and Puff and Strong Dragon from the Hub on arrangements. Whew. And I'm tired already. Dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it. Run dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it. Run dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it, run it, dash. Oh, run it. You can't feel that way. What an interesting contrast. The really smooth vocals with the kind of playful ad libs. Whoa, flex the vocal color, bae, okay. Okay. 
sit low in the vocals and get someone doing the ad libs up high. God, I think that hook is so catchy. Interesting vocal work, too. Oh, get pretty with it with the vocals. Hello. Honestly, the kind of classiness and the smoothness in the vocal section in this song is spectacular. to end on uh is it just a credits reel okay it's just a credits reel um whoa <laughs> okay turns out i missed kind of a heater whoa, i'm i'm genuinely kind of blown away by that <sighs> look if mx music was if there's ever a group to describe or like to kind of call their music quirky in that kind of experimental way and mix for me have always had that creativeness when it comes to their music down they've always done it so well and they've done it in a different way every single time that's really kept me kind of coming back for more in a way like their debut OO, admittedly, I didn't really like at the beginning. I thought that mid-song genre switch, the very first M-Mix changeup, was too much. It was really confusing. It has grown on me significantly since then. We move forward into DICE. Another, once again, M-Mix changeup, let's go. Big switch up. Didn't mind it as much. In fact, I quite like the switch up in DICE. And then, well, we had, what, Young Dumb Stupid? I guess we had the Christmassy song. And then we had Young Dumb Stupid, which I thought was such a cool and creative song. And then we had... Shoot. What's the, what's the song called? Uh... Why can't I remember what the title track from Expergo was? Uh, it's not... Young Dumb Stupid was the pre-release. Uh... Anyways, you get my point. It's and then we have what Roller Coaster Last Era. Uh... You know what? I'm pulling up Spotify. I'm gonna cheat because that is such an embarrassing look for me. And mix. Oh, love me like this. Love me like that. And then Party O'Clock and Roller Coaster. Every single time, the vibes have been different. But every single time, they've been musically really interesting. Dash, for me, kind of feels like they've taken certain elements from previous stuff, and they've really given it this refreshed spin on it. And for me, honestly, Dash might be, from a musical point, my favorite title that NMX have done. It's really engaging. I love the little details that are involved with it. I think there's so many little moments that just make the overall thing come together so well. Like, we'll go back to the beginning. Dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it. Run the dash, 
dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it, run it, dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it, run it, dash, I wanna run it, run it, dash, I wanna run it, like even the main hook there, you're getting two extremes. You're getting the purely rhythmic dash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it, and then all of a sudden you get this really rich vocal harmony to pair it up, pair it off with it. There's no really in the middle. You're getting your two extremes, and the contrast and the pairing that those two create, I think, creates such a cool texture to listen to. And that's kind of the thing and the themes throughout the verse in Dash. Is you get the really pretty verses, then you go super rhythmic, and then it plays off of each other back and forth. And you don't really get a middle section at all. It's, it's, at least in the vocal parts, and I think that's so cool to me. Super pretty, a little bit playful, get really smooth with the vocals, get really playful with the ad-libs. I, I just think it's the pairing that works for me in this. It's, it's creating so many contrasting moments, but every single one plays into the song so well. Keep it moving. This pre-chorus, the, the smoothness of it. I'm also really liking the fact that Bay's getting a lot of moments to flex the low vocals. I feel like she's getting to do it more and more as a mix progresses through their discography, and I love that. Because I think Bay's low tone is just Bay's vocal color in general. I think is spectacular, but the fact that she can hit cover that low tone so well and has that, I think her vocal color just really suits that low tone, especially in the end mix ensemble lineup. Oh. And then, flip it back. And that's kind of the entire story throughout this entire song. Is It's, you have side A, you have side B, boom, bring them together. You have side C, you have side D, boom, bring them together. And I think, does it so well. Now, where where's my... There's two moments towards the latter end of the song. This slowdown coming up here. First off, I'm, I'm guessing that's a Lily High note in the background just based off of vocal color. Nope. That slowdown's crazy. Is it... It comes out of nowhere. I mean, you hear the record scratch, and that is the indicator that something's gonna happen. But the slowdown is so visceral that your body almost reacts to it. Like, your body almost slows down listening to it. And I think that's such a unique sensation to get out of a song like this. Keep it going. And this post chorus rich vocals again this bridge switch up very much feels like the more matured but also rock inspired switch up from oo it's got the sudden brightness of it you know islands in the sky type of dealio but also, like, it it switches the song up in a fairly drastic way. Not I've, probably not as drastic as OO, admittedly, but I think what makes the what makes the transition work for me is it went from a pretty big vocal moment into a vocal switch up. It wasn't just like big rhythmic moment all of a sudden we're just gonna throw if all the melodies that we have in at once kind of like an oo so in terms of the end mix switch ups this might be one of the in my opinion one of the best executed end mix switch ups that they've done like i think dash was there not, not dash um dices was really good it was still very drastic and admittedly that was kind of like a big thing when that dropped 
Dash for me, even though it, they do say switch up, it's not, it's it's a pronounced switch, but it's not as imposing of a switch. It feels more natural than the other ones they've done. And I think that's why listening to it, it makes it a lot easier for me. And this kind of anthemic nature of it is really good too. I like it. The vocal moment, the vocal moment. I just wanna continue my pace. And that little moment, Kyujin explained during uh, Unche Star Diary for this era. So it'll check out. But yeah, Dash is good. Dash is really good. All right, and then oh, we're back with Sonyar, of course. Um, I probably haven't listened to this since it dropped as the pre-release in December. So it'll be good to jump back on, see if I missed anything the first time around. But again, album listen. So, Sonya, track number two, lyrics by Bokju Young of La La Studio, Oh Hyung Son of La La Studio. All right, here we go. Composition by, let me take a breath. Brian Yu from The Hub, Honey Noise from The Hub, Aftershock from The Hub, Joseph K from The Hub, Brown Panda from The Hub, uh, LSY, Never Know, Frankie Day from The Hub, Ari from the hub, Ayushi from the hub, Jacon Aaron from the hub. <sighs> Arrangements: Brian New, Honey Noise, Aftershock, Joseph K, Brown Panda, all from the hub, and then LSY and Never Know. Good gravy! That is such a long list, but mostly all one music team. So I like this will probably be what you know the hub's music is like in a way, isn't it? And I see they're on Break the Wall at the end of the album, too, so... I'm very curious to see if there's any sonical connections between the two. Still one of my favorite pre-choruses, I think, if we're counting this as part of a project from this year, I love the pre-chorus for this. No need to worry. And again, like, if we're talking about M-Mix change-ups, this is probably the most subtle M-Mix change-up. Just because it really genuinely just feels like a continuation. It doesn't really feel like a big switch. And I think I said the same thing when we checked this out earlier, but... Oh, the vocals. The, that second verse, I don't remember it being that good, but I love that second verse. I'm, I'm so impressed at the uh, the head voice flip in the don't, no need to worry part because that's a high high and every single time it sounds so easy What an interesting ending. What an interesting ending to this song. It's 
so minimal, yet so impactful. Generally, though, I've forgotten how good Sonyara was as a song. Like, there's so many good parts about the song that I just adore. That pre-chorus is, oh, chef's kiss. It's so good. And I feel like this is very much along the lines of what I would normally associate with Enmix music. And it has that kind of quirky playfulness to it, but also the experimental factor in a way. Like, this is firm. This song is punchy in all the right places. And the vocals get their moments to shine. The rap verses in this song, I think, are really good. I think it, Sonyar, or Sonyar in general, just really enhances Kujin and Ju's rapping tones together. I think the, the one-two set that they create, I think, really suit this song. Like, how it's written. I think the cadences work really well on it. <sighs> yeah, I, what... Well, I know you checked this out in December. I mentioned how, like, okay, we're we're getting mix pop back, but admittedly, like, now that we've gone dash into Sonyar, this like M mix switch up is barely you you could all barely call it an M mix switch up in comparison, which I think is really neat. And I'm glad they've brought it back, because while it was a divisive thing back in their debut days. It kind of has, for me, become almost their musical identity is a, a mix switch up. And I'm glad they brought it back. I really am. And they brought it back in a really well done way. So I can't fault them for that at all. Oh, shoot. That's right. Uh, let me give me one second. Sorry, I had to fix the cue real quick. I didn't realize there was a performance video for Run For Roses. Um, I queued up the lyric videos and stuff. And then I found this, and, well, I forgot to get rid of the duplicate before we uh, started recording. So that is on me, but, I mean, for you, it would have only been one second. But this is Run For Roses. This is a song I'm very familiar with from this era, and it's a terrific song. Um, but we're going to still listen to it anyways, because, well, I want to listen to it again. And I want to talk about it again, because that's my, that's my personal brand, is waffle about music for a very long time. So... Track number three, Run For Roses, lyrics by Mr. Young K from Day 6, E. Sudan, and then Frankie Day from The Hub. Composition, Greg Bonnick, Hayden Chapman, Tate Chesterton, Danny Shaw, with arrangement by London Noise. That is a ridiculously stacked composition lineup. Hey, I'm pretty sure Greg Bonnick and Tate Chesterton are very pretty familiar names for me. Young K's work on lyrics and stuff in the past couple of years for girl groups have been really good. And then London Noise are an industry staple. It's a formula for success. That's all I will say. Run it. We're alive cause we are not alone. Hand to hand, you know we won't let go of. Run for roses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The vocal only low start. Sets the tone so well. Thank you, thank you, music team, for letting Bay flex the low vocals. Also, shout out Soul Yun on the low vocals. And hello, the vocal harmonies. I would love to hear, I know Young K and Edmix did a It's Live for this. I would love to get like a proper K band to do a cover of this. I feel like they could really do something with it. I mean, considering there's the big violin moment, Lucy's always a shout with Yechan on violin, but... Soyu 
Jason's got a really kind of crispy pronunciation in that chorus. I never clocked that. Again, this kind of playfulness coming in. Get the rhythmic, get the playful in the ad libs. has everything I want. It's it's nice and lengthy. There's plenty to sink your teeth into. <sighs> Nothing against the title tracks. Well, I guess title track in pre-release, but Run For Roses, like, at this point in the album is my favorite song on the album. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite end mix songs from recent releases full stop. There's just it's weirdly got a mix pop kind of feel to it. Like Run for Roses definitely has a side A and a side B thing going for it. Like the verses and that main hook very different sonically, but it doesn't give off like immediate, you know, end mix switch up vibes cuz the switches aren't meant to be pronounced. It's like you have your side A and your side B and they kind of just interconnect with each other and there's really no cue to switch apart from you know when the chorus is going to start. I think it's cool. And it's keeping that essence of Nmix, but going along the more standard uh, pop formula, so to speak. But yeah, the that hook. There's just something about Run For Roses chorus section that majestic might be the wrong word for but it just gives me such happiness listening to i don't know what it is like just something about this gives me so much happiness Maybe it's the harmony. Yeah, something about something about that chorus just works for me. But what was the one point I made earlier? Oh yeah, Soyeon with her um, English moments, specifically in Run for Roses, her pronunciation is like really crispy i don't know what it is about this song in particular but there's a moment in was it the second chorus It is a second chorus. Yeah, for some reason, that second verse with Soyun leading well, the second chorus part, specific, like even in the English parts, just in general, I feel like all the words and the enunciations for all the words are really crispy. I don't know if I've ever noticed that about Soyun's vocal delivery. I'm going to have to pay attention to that moving forward. That's really interesting. Huh. Hmm. Giving me some food for thought, so to speak. Yeah, it's also a very lengthy song, too. It's, what, three and a half minutes, roughly? In this economy? That's spectacular. All right, now, the entirely new B-sides for me. Track number four, this is Boom. Uh, lyrics by Oh Hyun Son of La La Studio, Jung Da-in, and Yu Gayong of Artifact, and Lee Su-ran. 
Uh, composition, Ryan S. John, Jack Brady, Jordan Roman, Austin Wolf with Ryan S. John and the Wavies on Arrangement. Very familiar with the Ryan S. John production. But let's see what Boom is like. I'll be your jack in the box. I'm dang your perch up in the nitty it out now. You yell me, don't stop. Don't stop, babe. We get don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop, babe. You've been a good one. Loading 99. Doc, here's a deep rock. You're the paradigm. You're dang it. Don't stop. Don't stop, babe. I'm dang it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop, babe. Boogity bonja on my mind. Mouse out in the Hello, Harmony. What? What is happening? Okay, I don't know what's happening right now in terms of the music, but I love it. Wow. <laughs> Compositionally, this is a very simple verse. I love it. I think having the verses be primarily rap on the top line and the supporting elements being this really cool vocal harmony is such a cool style. Indescribable hardness to this song that I just. Oh, switch up the rolls a little bit. rip i'm so intrigued by this song it's i i would oh my god i, I don't have words i want to go back to three minutes ago when i didn't know what this song was just so i can experience that again because i feel like i've had like an epiphany listening to that what in the <sighs> jamie that song has just smacked me in the face so hard it's like you know, Run For Roses is like a comfort zone song for me. I'm very familiar with it. It's really pretty. And then all of a sudden, boom, just two-ton car straight to the chest. Oh, man. And then, of course, it's M-Mix. An unprompted M-Mix switch up to finish. Like, how, how dare you, Six, do that to me? How dare you? I'm kidding. Um, a a B-side of this nature hasn't hit me this hard since Wavy's Rodeo from last year. From the on my youth album what i, I want to listen to this again but i don't have the time to do it like we're four songs in i've already spent 30 minutes on that's too long we need to keep moving but i love like this is not a song that i would go and search for had i not listened to it i'm not usually a fan of like the big uh rap main part songs i'm very much more a vocal like melodic top line person this has just thrown that, like, uh, what do you call it? Thrown that sentiment straight out the window. Having that rep 
oriented top line carry the verse and then you squeeze in just this gorgeous vocal harmony underneath and it grows and it develops as the song goes on and then all the sudden the song just like oh you know what why i'm gonna go back it's like Wait. Like you can just slowly start to hear the background build. And the fact that the entire line isn't just constant rap or rhythmic, you throw in that really long sustained held note and then you get this really cool almost synthesizer chord to finish every line. That is so cool to me. That that's like my favorite part about the whole verse section is the second half. You have the underlying harmony, and then it just develops into that bonkers vocal chord. And I, and then it's like yes you're gonna feel every single beat hit they want you to feel it you genuinely do feel it and it's like oh yeah oh yeah i can get on board with this and i also noticed a very cool little detail is through the verses through the choruses following the verses the light your heart up is unison probably it was like a mixed low a little bit and then the members in charge the tick 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 and then unison boom boom yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the end of the bridge going into the final chorus. It's the other way around. So you have, I think it was Bay, was doing the light your heart up, and then the tick 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 was the unison, and then bringing Bay back for the final boom boom at the end. Thought that was a really cool touch. You know, switch it up a little bit. Right, we gotta move, move because we're almost at 40 minutes. All right, passion fruit track number five. Lyrics by Danka Pak. So, Danke of La La Studio, Pak Subin of Giant Factory, and Jin Sol. Uh, I'm guessing Jin Sol is not member Jin Sol, because I think the spelling is different, and if it was, it would have stayed in NMX next to it. But uh, David Wilson, Colin Magalong, and Sorana on composition, and Dwiley on arrangements. Okay. Those producers are names I do not recognize, which will be interesting. Oh, I like the groove here. It's quick, but it's not like overwhelmingly fast. Don't you proceed with caution? Love a little call and response. Oh, not too much of a switch into the chorus, but not mad at it. The vibe's nice. What an interesting post chorus. Oh, I'm, I'm glad the call and response section wasn't a one, one and done kind of deal. Because I think that really adds to the playfulness that Nmix music can have. The groove is so nice. Like it's really catchy. It doesn't change a whole lot. Big vocal moment and then a little slow down for the vocals and the chorus. Bring the beat back. Mmm. Mmm. 
that's got a nice groove to it. I'm, I'm kind of glad we got a little bit of a simpler song because I was getting a little bit tired after, admittedly, a pretty eventful first four songs on the album. Passion Fruit's nice though. It's chill. I like it. It's definitely a song I can, you know, see myself listening to on the daily commute. Just like, say, walking to the grocery store, just, that's what's up, that's what's up, da, 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 da. like, have a little bit of a different kind of pep in my step and just kind of, you know, sh shoulders up and down groove kind of song. I'm not mad at it. I am curious about how that final chorus came to be, especially where you kind of had like three different motifs going at once, like three different little vocal motifs that occurred in the song previously kind of appeared again i thought that was really interesting to just like listen along to so it was like hey we're gonna give you a little highlight medley of what this entire song was boom throw it in at the end it's like because weirdly worked it, it was busy but it weirdly worked for me it's also very short but it didn't feel like i was enjoying it too much to really care about how short the song was so that also works in its favor nice nice Right here, next up, track number six, XOXO. Lyrics by Huang Yubin of XYXX. Hyunggun Hyung, Hyung of In House. Composition Jaina Brown, Ori Rose, Novo Door, and TMM with Novo Door on Arrangements. Start with the record scratch, why don't you? Way to bring in a little bit of a rap line as a transition into the chorus. And I love this Lily Hair with 1 2 going on here. Oof, that pause felt for like forever. Ooh, Lily, get your low vocal moment. Okay. I like that combo. There's more vocals underneath Lily on the ad libs there. You know, I mentioned earlier that I'm really liking how Bay's getting to flex the low vocals. Everyone's getting to flex the low vocals in this album, and that's really cool. Okay, in a weird way, that's giving me ballad energy. It's really chill. I think like the vocal moments are super pretty and they're super pronounced, so they're very much front and center. You can't miss the big vocal moments. I do like, especially with both Passion Fruit and XOXO, we're getting a lot of vocal pairings. Like moments where two vocalists go back and forth, kind of call and response, or like an ABAB -A -B action kind of dealio. And I'm liking that. It's almost like that's adding the playfulness now. And with XOXO in particular, the transition into the chorus, 
give, throw in that uh, gimme XOXO line, spoken and rhythmic instead of melodic, I think creates the coolest little focal moment. Because you go from the sudden injection of rap into this nice, lovely two-bar vocal section. It's like, oh, oh, you know, it's that it's that two-stage realization moment. You're thinking, oh, when the rap verse comes in, and then the vocal comes in. You're like, oh, and I like that. It keeps you on your toes, but it's still very straightforward. It gets your attention at just the right moments for the exact same... Er, not the exact same, the exact length of time that the song requires you to fully enjoy it. Nice, nice. And we have one more song to go. This is track number seven, Break the Wall. Lyrics by Park Ji Hyun of Artifact and Oh Hyun Son of La 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 Studio. Composition, bear with me, this is a long list. Um, Ayushi, Ari, Frankie Day, Brian Yu, and Honey Noise from The Hub. And Brian Yu and Honey Noise from The Hub on arrangements. All right. I'm going to guess that this probably isn't a ballad. Let's find out. Definitely not a ballad. Hopeful Anthem? Hello Pizzicato Shoulder Strings. Hopeful Anthem, tick. No, oh, I'm a sucker for this, man. Oh. The thing is, it's not just like an anthem because like the vibes are good. Everything, like, the energy levels work, the instrumental choice works, the vocal moments works, the message behind the song works. The pizzicato choice is really cool. It's bright, it's in a really good major key. Gang vocals are always great for an anthem. Hello, post chorus. Long post chorus. Thank God we get a bridge, too. Like, this is a proper length song. Big instrumental switch here, too. Okay, that is the perfect album ender. Hey, don't get me wrong, I love when a pop album ends with a ballad. This, hmm, how do I want to phrase this in a way that'll get my point across in the way I want it to get across? 
for this NMIX album, FE304 Break, this is far beyond the best way this album could have ended. I prefer this over a ballad on this specific album. It's perfect. It's bright. It's pretty. It's really long. In this day and age, look, it's almost three and a half minutes in this day and age. Oh, it's like I won the lottery. But you know, genuinely, the vocals are so good. The message is great. The song itself is really well written. I love the instrumental choices. I think it drives the like the human emotion part of the song that much better. And is this? Ooh, I didn't think this would be the one that kind of gave Run for Roses Run for its money. But honestly, in general, any of this, any of the songs in this album could be a piece out of the album for me. I mean, Run for Roses I'm biased towards because I've listened to it. But Break the Wall is the exact type of song I want to listen to, like. Maybe when I've had a not so great day, you know, like the key the song's written in and the style the song has been written in itself will give me that little bit of a boost of energy. Meaning behind the song didn't give you that little extra little boost of energy. And honestly, it's got a lot of things that I like about pop music. It's got the really pretty vocals. It's got the really like kind of rhythmically fun to listen to rap verses as well. I think the instrumental choices are spectacular. That's also coming from a biased point of view because I played violin for years growing up. Whenever you get like sh pizzicato shoulder strings in pop music, I feel like it's very rare. You don't get that a whole lot. There's a certain style of music that you get pizzicato strings on. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure. Da -da 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 -da. Doesn't Cool have some pizzicato strings? The intro for cool, I'm pretty sure it has some pizzicato strings. But like, pizzicato strings, I feel like is a rare instrumental choice in pop music. It's usually bowed strings. And even then, that's usually for like disco style string hits or out and out ballads. You don't really get it on upbeat pop songs. So that's a really cool inclusion. Um, I, I want to... I know I've kept you all for a while, but I want to hear Lily's high vocal moment again. I didn't go back far enough, did I? It's back here, isn't it? And she's still going. She's still going. And she's still... Oh. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. That is that my favorite MX album that they've ever done? Probably, yes. Like, Expergo was a fun time. And I think it was made especially fun because we did that acapella album sampler and honestly no group in my like recent k-pop memory had done acapella since the days of like lovelies and red velvet uh, that was just such a cool thing they did the music itself was really good but that album sampler really did it for me last like major album you know we had like roller coaster since then but genuinely fe304 as a collective project, is probably my favorite thing MX have done so far musically. It's spectacular. It's the musical quality ha is ridiculous. Hey, and this isn't just like one set of songs from one music team that's doing it. Every single song, the quality is insanely good. There's so many little things going on with it. I think the music team around mmix have really honed in on what makes that mmix sound work and they've got like certain pairings that work and they're still experimenting with certain things and genuinely there is this is for me a no skip album and i can say that with chest this is a no skip album i will like i'll put all these songs on my k-pop playlist and i'll just like i have, usually have my k-pop playlist on shuffle anyways but if any song from this album pops up, I'm not skipping it. I'm gonna jam the fuck out of to it. God damn. I'm so impressed. They're so impressive to listen to. And to think, with the way they debuted, I really didn't like the debut song. 
so i didn't really get attached to the group it took until dice and then eventually you know young dumb stupid and stuff to really lock well funky glitter christmas is probably when i really started to lock in with mmix and ever since then god they have been so impressive to follow they've been so much fun to follow and every single time there's an mmix project out i'm always so excited to check it out whether it's a proper studio release or even on like an ost they've been so fun they've been so fun every single time um b-side of the album from the new songs that we checked out is either break the wall or boom i'm still gobsmacked at the shock that boom uh gave me run for roses is still really good but i also have a lot of time invested in that song already um dash and sonyar if we're treating sonyar as kind of a second title track in a way because it was considered the pre-release um spectacular i love that mix pop is back the dash i think is such a well executed song from a like contrast point of view i mentioned that already i've already talked your ears off about it i think sonyar having gone back to it after four months has also like aged very well as well but god yeah i genuinely have no qualms i can say about this album at, at any point like there weren't any production things that kind of like irked me i i usually say i'm already wanting more music from them i mean that's no different but that's a seven song album that's a lot that's like that could be considered a studio length album in certain uh, certain companies in certain places man i if Enmix can keep this quality up they're gonna be i mean they already are a fun group to follow not just like musically but in terms of like the offstage personality stuff as well they're kind of i don't really like using the swear part but kind of batshit crazy sometimes and i love them for it but if this is the level of quality that they can bring to the table every single time and this level amount of improvement they bring to the table every single time what is next comeback going to be that that kind of what if scenario is terrifying to me because this is already really good where can they go oh Oh, that the answer to that question is gonna be so cool to check out and i guess what what else stand out members from this era bay's kind of become an interesting member for me in mmix because for me she and nct's jaehyun have very similar kind of like artist traits for me they i always notice them on every single release they do and i'm always really impressed or surprised at what they do even though they've done it time and time again and it's always bay for some reason like bay and then on nct side jayhan have always had that kind of like surprise factor for me but god they're so good they're so good no mvp might be so for me this era because i feel like the range she showed off was like huge like ability both vocally and on the rapping side of things I feel like her range just went from like pretty big to ridiculously expansive and that was really cool to see but i've talked your ears off enough for one day i'm gonna cut it off here thank you all for listening along with me hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did one last request from me today let's work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world whether it be checking with your friends and family holding the door open for somebody or even picking up a piece of trash off the street just one small act of kindness to be brighten up someone else's day to day and know that wherever you are in the world should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be even though i'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time well, evidently waffles a lot about music in his free time know that i will always be a friend an ally and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me so take care of yourselves take care of each other spread the love and i'll see you next time bye bye